All right, bell ringer for today. Here we go. So we will continue those presentations again Friday. All right. So make sure you guys are ready for that. Okay. Make sure you have your citations. APA. Uh, we all know that. Uh, bell ringer, describe the misconceptions about the theory of evolution. There you go. So we went over two of them on Tuesday. Misconceptions of theory of evolution. There he is. Just working on the bell right here. How's Teeter feeling? I don't know. I don't hear much. You didn't hear much? Mm -hmm. oh, I thought you talked to him a lot. Gotcha. I heard he, uh, I heard he broke his leg. He really? Oh, it was tree stand. Really? That had to hurt. That had to. Oh. T's and P's for him, right? Thoughts and prayers. All right, do we need more time? We good? Just a sec. Just a sec, okay. What do you think of the dreadnoughts, Cody? What do you think of the dreadnoughts? Yeah. You like them? They were pretty neat. This is about uh, Yeah, we went over Tuesday. So the conception, misconceptions that we talked about. All righty, you guys ready? Okay, so describe the misconceptions about the theory of evolution. So what are some misconceptions? We went over two of them. So what are the two that we went over? Alex, what's one of them? Yeah, so what What actually? Yeah, common ancestor. Good job. So we actually didn't just 
come from monkeys. We we have uh, and chimpanzees, whatever. We uh, have a common ancestor. Good, good job. Two. What's the next one? Don, go ahead. All right, yeah, good, good job. What else do we have? What else do we have? Rooster? We talked about Punnett squares, right, and how the dominant trait kind of uh, reveals itself and, and – uh, Kind of misconceptions like, oh, bigger brains, right? Bigger brains. Okay, but with bigger brains, it was uh, the ability to communicate, to relate information, memories, and experience to better survive in your environment, right? Okay, so that's what it meant by number two. Uh, behavior can be or can alter heredity. All right, good. Good job. Good job. All right, is there any questions on that, guys? We good? Okay. Go cab. How about I give you one song worth? Does that work? One song, vocab, and we'll move on today. Types of neurons. Types of neurons. Good stuff. I knew, Katie, you like it. <laughs> I was just thinking about Okay. Um, I don't go through them like I do for American history. I just post it out. You can play it because there's a lot of terms. Yeah. I don't know what date that was. I was confused because I wasn't saying it. Let me see where that was. It might have been a week ago. A week ago. Yeah. Thursday, 1022. No, but I have paper over there by Alice. I know there's a lot of terms. How's it coming? Rooster? 12-1? <laughs> You're probably like, what is this torture? Oh, good Lord. Don't worry. It'll be all worth it. Extra points for vocab. It's going to be a schmeary practice today, TC and Dom. You know it. Gonna go in the gym. I was gonna say, what was it three inches of rain or sand? Anybody else think it's 
Um, I don't know. I, I only went in one day. And it was just Colin and I. I know who watches it, but from what he was saying, no. No one really goes in. All righty. Moving on. You guys will have some time to work on your activity today, which is nice. And then uh, I'll play a video after I'm done going over these slides, which is only like four of them. So you should have some time to yourself. If we have a little bit extra time after the activity, when you're done with it, we can start up some. We can start up some uh, presentations again. All right, neurons. Neurons. Okay, we're gonna be talking about neurons more tomorrow. Okay, when we get to the axon, the dendrite. Okay, cell body. Uh, we'll get into some of the axon terminals, the myelin sheath. Or the sheath. Uh, there's many different things within the neuron that uh, helps fire signals and send information uh, to and from our brain. Okay, and a connection of these neurons within our brain, which we'll talk about the types of neurons today. So don't worry about these just yet. Okay, alongside. Uh, we'll discuss those more tomorrow. Okay, and then we'll talk about the firing of the neuron on Monday. Okay, so moving on. Types of neurons. Here we go. Types of neurons. So there's three main types of neurons I'd like you to know. What's up, Dom? You're lucky I'm at 100%. Don't you have a charger? Oh my gosh. Good lord. Yep. Okay, so types of neurons. Like I mentioned, we have uh, three main types I want you to know sensory neurons, motor neurons, and inner neurons. Okay. And uh, they're, they're pretty self explanatory here. Uh, there's efferent neurons, which we'll describe a little bit. Uh, it's just that these are just kind of dumbed down names for them. And. Uh, We'll discuss that a little bit later. So three main tasks of neurons is, number one, receive information from the neurons that feed it. Okay, with these neurons, they connect to one another. Again, we'll talk about more of this, okay, the parts of the neuron tomorrow. Okay, so just focus more on what they do. So they carry information down its length and pass the information on to the next neuron. So it's really just sending information back and forth. Okay, they're a connection. These neurons are a connection within your body that help receive and send information for movements, uh, senses. Maybe it's smell, taste, touch, okay? Or it's just everyday movements that we don't even really have to think about, okay? With these neural connections, the more we perform a task, the easier it is, okay? The easier thing, you know, we don't even have to think about performing these tasks. Like breathing, uh, blinking, hearing. Right? We don't have to think about it, we just do them, okay? We just process it over many, many years and um, times perceiving this information and sensing this information and doing different types of motor movements, okay, we don't have to think about it, we just perform it. And that is due to the neural connections are broadening, or thickening over time. Does that make sense? Yeah, like shooting a basketball, Cody, right? At first when you did it, probably wasn't the greatest, right? No, probably just chucking it up like baseball or something like that. But after a while, yeah, granny shots are formed. But after a while, uh, when you perform that task over and over again, you uh, it's almost like second nature, right? All right, so first one, sensory neurons. <clears throat> so sensory neurons are afferent neurons. Okay, I might ask that on the quiz. I might not. So make sure you guys write that down, the afferent neurons. Okay, easier term, it's just sensory neurons. They act like one-way streets that carry traffic from sense organs towards the brain. Makes sense, right? They're sensing information around. Okay, either touching or feeling, smelling, hearing, okay, uh, maybe just visualizing something. And it's sending that information to our brain. So sensory neurons, they're sensing the world around us. Okay, they're sending information to our brain. You guys got it? Okay, so sensory neurons, we're receiving information. Sensory neurons are sending that information to our brain. One-way street, one-way street. All right, so the sensory neurons communicate all of our sensory experience to our brain. Like I mentioned, vision, hearing, taste, touch, smell, pain, and balance. Okay. Uh, 
especially with driving. I know for me, when I first got behind the wheel, I was a little worried, a little nervous, okay, because I was sensing all this information around me. And when I was driving, maybe it's just a deer running out or something like that. I don't know. Or when you're driving, you need to observe for stop signs, stop lights, okay, uh, speed limit. There's many different things. When I first started driving, I was like, oh, I'm really worried about it. Okay, I was really nervous. And you're sensing all this information. It's, uh, it's uh, kind of makes you anxious. But after a while, once you perform this task over and over again, you can text and drive. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Uh, you can. It's almost like second nature. You can do it to a point where you don't even think about it. Please do not text and drive. It was just a joke. It was just a joke, Rooster. You got that? You better not do it. You better not do it. All right. Yeah, but it's to the point where you just don't even think about the process. It's just you're sensing this information, and uh, it's just like second nature. TC maybe uh, trying to avoid a tackle, right, a sack. At first, when you got first got in there, you might have been a little nervous, right, observing the defenders coming after you. But then after a while, you're safe, you're, you're sound, you can step up in the pocket and deliver a good throw. The sensory neurons thicken over time. They broaden okay, to a point where we're, we feel comfortable with more sens uh, sensation, okay, with more information coming in. Uh, movie theater, when I was for the first time I went to movie theater, I was like, oh, my gosh, this is loud. This is crazy. But after time in the movie theater, a couple minutes or so, we kind of adapt to that environment, right? It's not so loud. We enjoy it a little bit more. And, and uh, we don't think about the overall booming sound of it. Okay, we, we kind of adapt to our surroundings. Next one, motor neurons or efferent neurons. Okay, efferent neurons. So unlike sensory neurons that send information to our brain, motor neurons send information away from our brain to the rest of our body. Okay, makes sense. Motor neurons, we're moving, right? Okay, our brain is processing this information, okay, it's sending it to the rest of our body for these motor movements, okay, these fixed movements that we're trying to perform. So effort one-way routes that transport messages away from the brain, okay, to muscles, organs, and glands, okay. So like everyday tasks, movements, okay, walking, talking, uh, going to the bathroom, right? We don't have to think about it. We just do it. After many times doing it and performing it, these neural connections get stronger and thicken to a point where it's second nature. And motor neurons send information from our brain to the rest of our body. Reflexes, right? That's a big one. Motor neurons. So responding to certain information. Like I said, with driving, okay, obviously if stop sign's coming up, um, when we first were, were driving, it might have been a little tricky to our spatial, uh, our spatial uh, uh, distancing when trying to stop and you know, hitting on the brake. Maybe if you're using an automatic, a shifter or something, you got a downshift to the point where you're maybe going in neutral and starting back up, putting it back in first gear. It might be tricky at first, but over time, these, uh, these neural connections get stronger to a point where we can, motor neurons are telling our, the rest of our body to perform these tasks without even thinking to do it. So motor, motor neurons, effort neurons, sending information away from our brain. And the last type of like you know, interneurons. Interneurons. So the sensory motor neurons really don't connect together, okay? Uh, it's up to the inner neurons to communicate that information from our sensory neurons to our motor neurons so that that communication is uh, able to be processed within our brain. Okay, whenever we're sensing information, we need to react to it, right? Okay, uh, maybe it's just walking. Right? Maybe something like, like I said, at a stoplight when it turns red. Okay, we're sensing that it's red. We have to uh, process that information and send that information to our body to stop, right? Okay, so inner neurons are connecting that information, the sensory neurons, to the motor neurons. So where do you think most of the inner neurons are located within the body? Where do you think? Brain. The brain. Yep, yeah, good job. Good job. Okay, it's processing that information to communicate it to the rest of our body.
So they relay messages from sensory neurons to other inner neurons or motor neurons in complex pathways, mostly located in the brain. Makes sense, right? It needs to be processed. We need to connect these, these sensory and motor neurons together. All right, is there any questions on that, guys? So make sure you guys remember the motor neurons, sensory neurons, inner neurons, okay? And uh, there is no scientific name to inner neurons. It's just inner neurons, okay? But with motor neurons, we have efferent neurons, okay? Sensory, apparent neurons, okay? So make sure you guys remember that. It might be up on a quiz. You never know. All right, so I just posted an assignment for you. An activity shouldn't take you too long this is more just to help uh, the students at home but I'd like you to fill it out try to complete it without the use of the slides okay or your notes so types of neurons all you're gonna do is describe the following types of neurons there you go and then what are the three main tasks of neurons okay there you go That's all you got to do. Submit that, and I'll give you a grade for tomorrow. So this is due beginning of class tomorrow. While you're doing that, I'll play a video. just kind of summarizes it up for us. Types of neurons. Here we go. What's up, Katie? What? Oh, yeah. Let me sign you out there. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. What I find incredible is taking information from the outside world through our five senses and making sense of it so that we can respond appropriately. We're able to do this because of three types of neurons. First, we have sensory neurons. Sensory neurons perceive information from sense organs. For example, the eyes, the tongue, or the skin. Everything that we can see, touch, taste, or feel is because of our sensory neurons. So the sensory neurons send sensory information to our brain and spinal cord. Take this for example. When I saw Spudnik, the sensory neurons in my eyes were firing. When I was petting him, the sensory neurons in Spudnik's my skin were dog. firing to feel how soft he was. <laughs> or a cat. The sensory neurons send a message to the brain where the brain processes it. The motor neurons carry commands from our brain to our muscles to allow us to act appropriately. So my motor neurons allowed me to bend down and pet stuff. Finally, we have the interneurons. The interneurons connect neurons to other neurons. Some interneurons connect sensory neurons to motor neurons, while some interneurons connect neurons in the brain. Interneurons outnumber our sensory and our motor neurons 10 to 1. 10 to 1. So that's right. Sensory neurons are responsible for all the incoming information that goes to our brain. Our brain interprets it, and our motor neurons allow us to carry out appropriate behaviors. Our interneurons connect with motor neurons to sensory neurons and also neurons to parts of the brain. Thanks, Susan. You want to get there? You go. I should help you with your assignment. 